Hello everyone! Welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and today we're doing another art critique. We have two beautiful new illustrations to review today. These are all thanks to the illustrations that you guys have submitted to me. And if you'd like to submit an illustration too and you haven't yet done so, you still can. Just go to my Facebook group, the Freelance Illustrators Cafe. It's a really wonderful community that I've created on Facebook where everyone can discuss, share their art, ask questions, and everyone is willing to help each other out, which is really nice to see. If you go in the pinned post right at the top, you will find the post where you can submit your illustration. It's this one with the funny gif. <laughs> so you can go in the comments and leave your illustration as well as whatever link you want me to give out, an Instagram, a website, etc. I hope you will check out this group. It's a wonderful community. But back to the art critique. Right before we jump into it, if you're as passionate about illustration as I am and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the little bell. The bell sends you a notification every time that I upload a new video and this way you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. All right, so we are starting today with this super beautiful and fun illustration by Lau Frank. I absolutely love this. Look at this. It's so funny and endearing. Very relatable for everyone who has siblings. There's so much that works here. It's just really well drawn. The story is great. You have characters that are very expressive. The poses are nice. I also love how Lau uses the colors to tell the story. You can see the whole room is done in pinks and purple, so it's so clear that this is her space. And with the contrasting green and blue colors on the little boy, he really looks like he's barging into a universe that's not his, which of course is the whole point of the story. So this is absolutely beautiful use of color to tell your story. It's so well done. So now let's go into some things that could be improved here so we can make this even better and in this illustration there are a few little things that don't quite work with the perspective but we really have to dig deeper to find them because at first glance this really works and this is because of all of the lines here that you've included they all go towards a finishing point somewhere around here very far out in the distance but they all are very consistent with that vanishing point. So at first glance, it all looks like environment that works very well. But if we look a little bit closer, there are some things that don't quite work. So if we look at these floorboards here and follow the lines, it looks like they're all converging into a perspective point that is central here, like a single point perspective. See how they're all straightening out here on the side so they're not converging to a single point, but it's somewhere, something that would be like around right here if, if we wanted to do an approximate. So it seems like it's a first point perspective that would start from around here. But this is not consistent with the other lines that we've looked at before. These ones, see, not consistent at all. If we were to be consistent with this point of perspective, now the lines here, you know, with the, the artwork and then also the lines with the ceiling, they don't work anymore. And this is because when you use a vanishing point that is inside the illustration, it can create some distortion like this, some extreme angles. So that's why I think it's a stronger choice to have your perspective point far out into the distance like these lines right here. And you're consistent with all of these lines except when it comes to the floorboards. So that's the thing that I would change, you know, just flatten out these lines, you know, on the side like this so that they're all consistent. But this is quite a minor detail for right now. Let's move on to other things. Another perspective thing that doesn't quite work is the sizing. And yes, size is absolutely everything to do with perspective because perspective is about building environments that make sense. And that includes the size. Here, your characters are actually much too big for this room. When you look at the height of the ceiling, the height of the door this character is like a giant and the little girl as well but I think where you might have gone wrong is that she looks good in comparison to the size of the bed but this furniture is also too big for the room and I think that's where you might have made a mistake if we look at where the ceiling line is then this bed even if you don't count the headboard just the mattress this bed is halfway through the ceiling it takes 
half of the height of the room, which is quite big for a bed, um, especially a kid's bed. So here, both the furniture and the character need to be smaller in order to make sense in this room. One other sizing problem that you have with the furniture is the width. So it looks okay when we look at it this way, but let's say we take this uh, board here from the bed and we follow it all the way through to the door, okay? So it would put it around here. And so if we look at the distance between this wall and this point right here, right, where it intersects, this wall starts here. And if you use the door as a standard sizing mechanism, the door is only about three or four feet wide. So this section here is about maybe two feet wide right at most from the wall so this bed if it's pushed completely against the wall is only about two feet wide if we're to project it against the wall here this bed would take up about this space it's halfway through to the ceiling so this bed takes about this space when projected in this direction so you can see that this isn't a realistic shape for this type of furniture. It might seem like a very small thing, but things that have standard sizing like doors or beds or chairs, when you get the sizing wrong in a perspective, it can really look off. And so it's really important when building a perspective like this to not just follow a vanishing point, but make sure that everything you're drawing has realistic sizing. I remember one of the first exercises that I did in school in my perspective class, uh, we had to draw a room and we literally had to use catalogs to look at the measurement of things. You know, a lamp, how high is the lamp, a couch, how wide is the couch? Everything that we drew, we, we had to have actual measurements for it and at some point you can start eyeing it but first you have to make sure that you get it right before you're able to eye it properly when you're doing a perspective like this in a room you can project the shape onto a wall using your vanishing points to make sure that you have enough space for all the furniture and it's all the right size but here for this illustration something that we could do to fix it without having to redraw everything would be simply to put the ceiling higher so this line here doesn't have to be here the ceiling can be higher and then the door would be higher as well to go along with that and we can put the door a little bit more on the right side this way it would make the furniture fit the room the children fit the room and you wouldn't have to redraw everything because this is an illustration that's already so neat it would be too bad to just chuck it away or redraw the whole thing so that would be my suggestion to fix the little perspective snafus in this picture i hope that you found this hopeful and again great great job with this fabulous illustration it is so fun you did amazing. The second illustration we're going to review today is this amazing piece by Sean Bianchi aka The Art Mentor right here on YouTube. Sean is a teacher, he takes professional commissions and he's on YouTube. We've even made a collaboration video in the past. I'm gonna link that in the corner. So obviously Sean has a very very high level. You can see it right there in this image but I'm excited because this means we're gonna be able to go into advanced and really nitpicky stuff <laughs> to push this image even further as far as we can take it. So the first thing I'm noticing is this absolutely great lighting in this image. You have great atmospheric perspective going on. So atmospheric perspective is when the colors are helping the perspective. So here you have the lightest colors from your sky and things that are further away are lighter, things that are closer are darker. This is textbook example of atmospheric perspective that helps show your environment. But I think we can push it a little bit further still because it's quite obvious you took a long time to render all this mid section, which is really, really pretty, but you have some pretty dark shadows here that sort of interfere with your characters and with the foreground. But if we go back to, at its core, the image is makeshift. We have a foreground, this cliff right here that is closest to us. Then we have a midground right here and we have a background. You do a good job separating the background and the midground, but here this foreground, it looks very similar in tone to the midground. I think we can push that a little bit. Ah, 
All right, so here we have darkened this plane right here. I think we can even push it a little bit further and you can see it helps in many different ways. It separates it right here from the midground and here the legs of the horse are actually standing out more with this addition. But I also think the midground needs to be a little bit paler. If you look at this thumbnail, there's quite a bit of dark in this image and the foreground is all going to be dark, but these characters are getting lost, especially the horse, but even him right here getting lost in this section is very, very dark. If you compare between the foreground and the midground, you actually have quite a distance. This is so much smaller. Look at this little guy compared to this one. So it's very much further away. And I think we could make it less contrasted and a lot lighter to emphasize that. All right, so I made this a lot lighter. I think it also got quite saturated. So I'm gonna try to desaturate this a little bit. All right, so I think this helps. It reduced the contrast a lot, which actually makes the characters pop more. I think I might even push that a little bit further still with another layer in some spot areas. So this blue shadow right here, extremely close in color to the character. I think it really just doesn't help the character stand out. And anything in and around the character can be brightened to make him pop. All right, I'm not too sure about this side. I think losing a little bit of something that was in the original. So we can just gently make that a bit less. But still, this helps on the character side. I'm gonna make this area a little bit less saturated right here. All right, so and I think that helps with the readability. And if we wanted, we could even push this further still by adding just a little bit of a halo around the character. Now, technically this is cheating, <laughs> but we want it to pop, right? So having a little main character halo to really make him stand out, I think that's fair game. And we can soften this out a little bit so it doesn't look quite so stark. All right, yeah, I think this helps. If you look at the thumbnail right now, this character now, his silhouette is just so clear, but the horse is still getting lost a little bit. And I think it's because of this foliage. Now, I'm not a big fan of this foliage. On the left side, I think it works great. It frames the image very, very nice. Also a nice contrast with the background. But on this side, not only the horse gets lost in it, but something that I'm not sure is that it really flattens the image because you have a lot of direction lines going just a second. You have some direction lines, right? Going like this that all seem to make it look like you have a little bit of an angle. You have a perspective like this going on. But with the symmetrical bushes hanging on each side like this, then this makes it seem like it's a straight on thing, right? It flattens it a lot. So I'm thinking, I'm not sure that this is quite necessary to have. What if this was just, you know, sky and we could use some of these darker clouds to frame the image instead. Now, of course, I'm going so fast, it's not nearly as nice as Sean's really beautiful fluffy clouds, but you get where I'm going with that. If you look at the thumbnail here, now the pair of them really stands out in stark contrast. It really brings it back to the basic, what this piece is all about. These two characters looking at the scenes. So in hierarchy, them first, then this. Now, if you wanted, you could have like a couple leaves or something like this, but the whole foliage thing, I think not very necessary. 
You could also add some bushes on the corner here if you wanted because it's quite a large area to have really nothing at all. So if you wanted at the front here, you could add like a little bit of, you know, maybe some long grass like this and a little bit of a bush. Maybe it would add a little bit of interest, but this is totally optional. One last thing that we could do, and this is really, really nitpicky here, so bear with me. <laughs> we could add a little bit of interest in this foliage by making it follow the perspective as well. So instead of this being all flat, how about if we make this into different planes? So this area could be lighter. So this looks like it's further away now because it is lighter and this area is closer. So it looks like the tree, you know, it's turning around, that it's a volume. We could even make some of this here a little bit darker accentuate this volume because trees are a shape right they're a volume they're not flat and so this is something that we could do if you want it again very nitpicky so yeah i think this is what i would do with this image let's do a before and after right so this was before already very nice and after so i just think we've pushed the composition and the lighting just a little bit further to try and clarify all the elements I hope that you like it, Sean, and I hope that you found it helpful, as well as everyone who is watching right now. And so this is it for another art critique. Really hope that you learned something. And if you want to submit your own illustration, then don't forget to go to the Facebook group and find the appropriate post. We still have a long list of images to go through, so there are many, many more art critiques in the future. But this is it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you so much for being here today and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!